Hi everybody, welcome to the project walkthrough for Watts 1020 Introduction to JavaScript, the Project FizzBuzz. Um, this is the first assignment for this course, so we're just jumping into JavaScript. And this is a really common uh, question that people get asked in interviews uh, when, whenever you're going for coding jobs, especially um, you know lightweight coding jobs where people really want to find out uh, what do you know. Um, people will uh, often ask you to do FizzBuzz. What is FizzBuzz? Well, as you read down here, um, this was a, a game uh, played by children uh, to learn division, and coding it is not terribly difficult, but it requires you to have a decent understanding of how to loop through a set of numbers, as well as how to um, you know, uh, uh, output information based on conditionals. Um, so conditionals, remember, being if-then clauses. So, um, so that's what we're going to do. We're gonna we're gonna write a little script that plays this game uh, between one and a hundred. So what it's gonna do is it's gonna count up all the numbers from one to a hundred. Um, if the number is divisible by three, it should output fizz. If the number is divisible by five, it should output buzz. And if the number is divisible by both three and five, it should output fizz buzz. Um, if none of those conditions are true then uh, the, the program should just output the number itself. That's the, that's the basic rules of FizzBuzz, and that's, we're going to adhere to that. So, um, so what we're going to do is we're going to uh, make, it, make all of this output to the, con to the console. So we're going to use uh, consoles for development, and, um, and we're going to just write a little um, script. Now, if you want to, you can check your, um, your numbers. Uh, 1 to 20 is what we're going from. And so you can check the output against this output here. Um, the output's not going to change if you're successful. So uh, it should look exactly like that. Um, so let's go ahead and dive in and see how, how to make this work. First thing we want to do is fork this repository. So this is something that people forget occasionally. Don't forget to fork the repository from the SU Web Dev copy into your personal account. So I've now forked it. And then I want to clone and make a note of this SSH clone URL. You don't want to use HTTPS or anything else. You want to use SSH. So I'm going to copy that. And then I'm going to go build my dev box here in uh, Code Anywhere. So I'm going to add the dev box. And going to click HTML5. And I'm going to hit Next. And this is going to be project fizz buzz and I'm gonna paste in the URL I'm gonna go ahead and leave it on Ubuntu that's fine with me I'm going to create okay so now I have my project fizz buzz box here and I'm waiting for it to copy all the files into it So now that I've got all the files here, um, I can begin work. And what I can see is that I have an index file that is just very, very simple and basically just links in a script tag. And then I have this fizzbuzz.js file. I prefer to work with um, split vertical view. So, um, and I really don't, don't even need this one open. So I'm just gonna, allow myself to see this whole thing here um, now in order to see the output it's easiest if I use the console and that's going to be easiest if I open this up in a new tab so I'm going to run this box um, and say run project and it's going to uh, pull this up for me here and then I'm gonna copy this and paste it into a new tab and so this way I'll be able to see what it says in the console if I just inspect this element I'll open up the developer tools box and I'm going to be able to see the console right here so right now it doesn't say anything so the first thing that I want to do is just just test out some kind of uh, console output to make sure that all my files are connected up properly so I'm going to do a console.log and I'm just going to say hello world. 
and that is going to log hello world to my console so I'm gonna save that and then come back here refresh and you notice that I see now hello world in the console here and I can see that it came from fizzbuzz.js line 2 so that's great I can execute commands here as well and you can see that it'll execute them right here so this is a good place for me to play with things and see how things work uh, so in order to do fizzbuzz I have to remember those rules and those rules can get tricky to remember so um, what I always start out with when I am uh, starting a um, project I always just write pseudocode which is is not real code but it's just explanations that let me get the instructions down that I want to make happen with the real code so the first thing that I want to do is um, I want to uh, I want to say I want to um, count through uh, numbers 1 to 20 um, and figure out if each one matches uh, is divisible by 3, 5, or both. So that's, that's the first thing that I do. Um, the next thing that I would do here um, is uh, for each number do the following check and I'm going to see if it is divisible by three. If so, uh, print fizz. Then I'm going to see if it is divisible by five. If so, print buzz. Now that gets us pretty close. But actually, that actually isn't all of the rules that we need. Um, I guess we can say, uh, see if it is not divisible by three or five. And if so, then we know that we need to print the number. But the, the thing that we don't have here is where do we print the word actually fizzbuzz? To do that, we can actually pick to put it in either location, either when we find out if it's divisible by 3 or we find out if it's divisible by 5. Um, what we really need to do is say, see if it's divisible by 3. If so, see if it is also divisible by five if divisible by three and five print fizzbuzz and if only divisible by three print fizz so all of this code kinda needs to go together and then we need a little chunk that checks if it's divisible by 5. And then we want another little chunk to check if it's divisible by 3 or 5. So let's go ahead and, and start um, working on these things. So um, the first thing is count through the numbers 1 to 20 and figure out. So for that, we're going to use a for loop. And we're going to say 4. And I is the, the letter that we often use to... Um, to represent uh, you know counters in for loops and things like that so we'll go ahead and just use the letter I which is just a placeholder number um, that I is gonna iterate on each loop so it's gonna start at 1 so I equals 1 it's gonna run until I is less than or equal to 20 as long as that is true then it's going to keep on running. Once it gets over 20, it's going to stop running. So that's what that second argument means there in the for loop. And then the third argument in the for loop is what we want i to do each time. And we want i 
to increment one character. So that is going to, um, the plus plus means go up one number. Uh, minus minus would mean go down one number. So you can increment up and down and that's a little shortcut that you can use instead of writing out I equals I plus one, right? That would be, that would get old. So now everything else that we do needs to actually happen inside of this loop. So I'm gonna copy all these comments and I'm gonna go ahead and put them inside the loop. And I care about indentation for readability and everything. So for each number, we're gonna do the following check. We're gonna see if it's divisible by three. So how would we write that? We're gonna use a conditional statement. We're gonna say if I modulus three equals 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 zero. Now let's take that apart a little bit and see what that means. What this means is that we want to find out if the modulus i modulus three equals zero. If it does, then we know that the number i is divisible by three and there's no remainder. If i modulus three equals anything other than zero, then the number is not divisible by three. We can try that over here on the console. If we go here, we see that four modulus three returns one, three modulus three returns zero, 15 modulus three returns zero, while 13 modulus three returns one. So if the modulus of the number is zero, then, the, then that means that it's an even division. And so we should print, so that means that the number i is divisible by three. So we're going to start that clause, say if the number i is divisible by three, then we wanna do all of these things. So that means we need to see if it's also divisible by five. So that would mean if i modulus five, zero equals zero. And the reason why I'm using three equal signs in a row is because we're comparing both the value and the type. So one equal sign assigns a value, two equal signs checks a value, three equal signs checks a value and a type. So we know that if anything goes wrong and we get something that we don't expect back, we're not gonna execute unless we actually get a zero back out of that, out of that I modulus five. So we know that if this is divisible by three and five, then we want to print fizz buzz. And so right now we know that it just said, this means that it's divisible by three, this means that it's divisible by five. So we're going to say console.log fizz buzz. Now, if it is not divisible by five, but it is still divisible by three, then we're going to say console.log fizz. And that's, that's this, this comment right here. I'm gonna put it in right above this so we know exactly what's going on. So now we have the part that checks, we've got fizz buzz and fizz taken care of. We can, um, we can actually try it and it's never too early to, to go ahead and try something out. So here I'm going to uh, refresh this page and you see that we now see a whole bunch of stuff getting listed out, fizz, 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 buzz, fizz. It's hard for us to know whether or not the right things are getting caught there, but at least something's happening and we didn't get any errors. So that's, that's a good sign so far. So um, the next thing we need to do is see if it's divisible by five and if so, print buzz. So if I modulus five equals 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 zero, then console.log buzz. Now, this is the same check 
that we had previously. But you notice that the previous check, this one came within the if i modulus three equals zero. So this one is checking to see if it's divisible by both three and five. This one comes outside of that code block. And so it is only checking to see if it's divisible by five. So for example, the number five is divisible by five, but not divisible by three. The number 15 is divisible by three and divisible by five. So we now have all of those cases caught. And um, the next thing we need to do is see if it's not divisible by three or five. And if so, print the number. Now, this actually, um, this is actually a little bit of a twist. And so I think we're going to be good off if we uh, restructure things a little bit, which is to say that we can actually use an what's called an else if here. First, we say if it's divisible by three, do all of this stuff. Then we say else if it's divisible by five, then do this. And then we can just say else. So if it's not divisible by three and it's not divis divisible by five, we can just print whatever the number itself is. So to do that, we can say console.log i. And that's going to print whatever the value of i is into the console log. So I tidied up some blank lines there. And now we can go ahead and go back and rerun this and get an idea. So here we go. We started the run right here. So one, two, fizz, that's divisible by three. Four, buzz, that's divisible by five. Six, fizz, is divisible by three. Seven, eight, nine is divisible by three. 10 is divisible by five, so it's buzz. Those are all right. 15 gets a fizz buzz, and that's the only one. So that's great. Now, um, that is the basics of writing fizzbuzz. But if you wanted to, you could enhance this script in a couple of different ways to make it a little more flexible. And so for the people who wish to sort of pursue a stretch experience, I'm going to give you a few little tips here. Um, one of the ways that are really good to enhance um, your scripts are to make sure that you are uh, allowing people to define, um, you know, things. Uh, so, uh, for example, in this case, we're, we're finding all the fizzbuzz between one and twenty. What if I wanted to find fizzbuzz between different numbers? Um, I would have to go back and modify that twenty in the code. That could be difficult. Now, what if I set a variable equal to the number that I wanted to check for? And I could just check against to see if it was less than that variable. And then that can maybe be changed by later on, like a form input or a slider or something. So I'm going to say var, and I'm going to say call this range limit. And I'm going to set this one equal to 100. And then down here, instead of saying i is less than or equal to 20, I'm going to say i is less than or equal to the range limit. And that should make it find all of the fizz buzzes between 1 and 100. So let's go ahead and try refreshing in the browser and see if that works. I'm going to clear my console and then refresh. And look at that. I can already see here that, in fact, it got all the way to 100, which is divisible by 5 but not divisible by 3. 99 divisible by 3 but not by 5. 90 divisible by 3 and 5. So. It did that, and it did it incredibly quickly. I mean, look at how fast this went. It started at um, 327 milliseconds, and it finished at 354 milliseconds. So it took about 24 milliseconds to calculate all of those fizz buzzes. That's pretty quick. Um, so you know, that's that's part of why we love programming. <laughs> um, we uh, we could also, um, for example, it's it's um, 
you know, maybe we want to have a different game, not just FizzBuzz. Maybe we want to call it like uh, FooBar or something like that, right? So we could we could make another variable that was like um, uh, response for three equals foo, and we could say response for five equals bar. And then down here, instead of responding with basic things, we could say, okay, if it's three, we can log the response for three. And if it's five, instead of just typing in buzz, we could log response for five. And then here we could log uh, response for three plus response for five. And this should um, make it so that it does fizzbuzz, except for instead of saying fizzbuzz, it says foobar. So we'll clear the console and refresh the page again. And as you see right here, we have foo and bar, foobar. So um, there's all sorts of ways that we could re rework this code. We could, um, you could write, uh, these checks in many situations here as uh, just one-liners with um, you know one-line conditionals. They're not that complicated. Um, all kinds of good things that you could do. So if you want to stretch, go ahead and stretch. Uh, for now, that's going to be the end of um, this uh, assignment demo and walkthrough. Good luck getting this all written. Good luck understanding and comprehending um, JavaScript. It can be tough to get into, so don't be bashful about asking for help or uh, asking lots of questions. It's important to get these things right up front, you know, so um, so that's all. When you're done with your work, you can uh, commit it. Remember, that's git commit. Um, completed fizzbuzz project, commit. Um, you might see these lines come up. Um, I like to just copy and then paste and then just change the relevant parts. And then I'll push it back to GitHub. This one can just be pushed back to the master. Uh, no big deal. And um, that's it. It pushed it back to my master. So now if I come here and refresh this page, I can see that I authored it 17 seconds ago. And if I go in here, I can see all my FizzBuzz code right there. So there you go. Uh, interview question, first assignment in JavaScript. Have fun. Um, enjoy yourselves. Ask lots of questions. Shout out if you need to. Take care, everybody.